Good Tuesday morning. There's a bunch of sayings here. There's a whole bunch of them here. I know what it must be. I don't know this, okay? I'm not a scripture scholar, okay? But my guess is this is a collection of the sayings that Matthew's had in the storage, in the culture. He'd heard them, of course, and he's cataloged them, okay? This is his chapter. So it's a bunch of sayings, okay? But they, they're in it. Do not give what is holy to dogs, I think a lily here, or throw your pearls to before swine. That, that is so used, that line. You know, oh, that's beautiful. Lest they trample them under foot and turn and, and turn and tear you to pieces. Oof. Do, now, here's the law of the prophets. He said, do to others what you would have them do to you. If that's not the Mosaic law, forget about it. Of course it is. And he says, this is the law of the prophets, okay? So he's, ca he's calling them up, but he's going to transform them, okay? Not going to get away with them. To get rid of them, he's going to radicalize them into a love, into love, you see? Now, here's something that I think is very important. This he's borrowing from far greater than just the Mosaic law. Greater meaning the extension. He's borrowing the whole virtue tradition here. See? Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the road broad that leads to destruction. And those who enter through it are many. How narrow the gate and constricted the road that leads to life. And those who find it are few. He's, now, you could take that canonically, legally. You could. I don't, I don't buy it at one second. It is true, but that's not enough. He's talking about the virtuous life. And boy, is he right. Aristotle, long before St. Matthew, long before our Lord, 400 years before St. Matthew saw the same thing. To live the good life, one has to live it virtuously. And it is easy not to. Virtues are hard to come by. It takes a lifetime of practice to acquire the appropriate virtues of life. And those give you life. The beauty of the virtues is they help you to live well. And living well and doing well and living well is the definition of eudaimonia, happiness. Happiness does not come automatically in life. It comes from virtue. And, the narrow, and it's a narrow route. It's to live emotionally under the guidance of reason and to hone that over the course of a life. That's why we see do with children time we raise our little children. Don't do this, do that. You don't, you, you, you're in a sense like training, a, a, I don't want to say training a dog, in the beginning it is a little bit. You reward the good and you punish the bad. But you then internalize, you give reasons. Now I can give reasons all day long to Lily, she you don't pay any attention. But I say, if you do this, I give you a cookie. <laughs> you know, she gets the idea. This gives you that, okay? Now I don't want to do that. I don't want to oversimplify it's not. I love the theory of virtue. I love Aristotle. To my mind, you could live a very good life if you just would follow. I tell it to my kids in class. If you learn to live, follow Aristotle, Aristotle's virtues, because they're virtues that humanize you in the human community. We are not isolated animals. We live in community, and that requires virtues, the virtues of justice, of moderation, see, Habits of the heart, that's another word for it. Habits of the heart so that you love well in the context of your life, in the unique circumstances of your life. To learn to love responsibly and well. Tenderly, when tenderness is called for, you are tender. When mercy is called for, you're merciful, you see. And you don't do it out of force, you do it out of the habits of your heart. You are, you are generous because you are habits of generosity. It isn't a struggle to give a Christmas present. It's a joy. I, I find it very... Can I give you another true story? One of the saddest times of my life, I have to say that it was the saddest and the loneliest time of my life. In many ways were my years in strict monasticism, I have to tell you. I'm being honest about it. Especially my years in Jamaica, the two years, 63 to 65. And I think it was the nature of the building. <laughs> in the New York City experience, I never want to go back there. But I was lonely because, especially at Christmas, because I wanted so much to have somebody to love and give a gift to. Not that I wanted to receive a gift, I wanted to give a gift. And I remember, because I'd be walking down, and we hung around New York City, of course, we were in Jamaica, we used to go down into Manhattan all the time, okay? And it was to go, oh, you want excitement, go down Fifth Avenue in New York, or, Third, or Madison, or Third Avenue, in that area. Ah, oh, the excitement. The week before Christmas, the weeks before, after Thanksgiving, holy cow, people at Christmas shopping. And I, I wanted so much to Christmas shop. 
I saw these people going in and out of the stores and carrying the packages. I wanted somebody to give a gift to, and I have now since, with many people in my life. I give a lot of gifts, I have to say I do, and I find a great deal of pleasure in it. To me, gifts are sacraments. They make present a giver, you see. I tell that to my friends, you know. I cannot give a gift away. Whenever the one I receive a gift, they're so sad. My house is full of gifts. Oh, God, I'm full of them. And I don't know what will ever happen to them because they're so sacred to me. And I think, God, that was Mom's, that was Pete's, but hey, but I'm, those were Junie's, she gave me this. I think Sarah gave me that. Stuff like that. I look, this was somebody, this was, yeah. And they may, see, they make present to give her. A gift makes present to give her. They're not things, they're sacraments. The sacraments of life. Yeah. So, I think you have to acquire the habits of giving. And the, even the habits, the virtue of how to receive with gra generosity. You receive with generosity. The beauty of the gift given. To see in the gift the giver. And to love the giver in the gift. No matter what the gift is, it's sacred. I don't care what it is. I don't care what it is. <laughs> it could be a piece of string. It could be anything. Anything that carries the story, you see, the narrative. I'm telling you that. I mean it too. See? Those are virtues. You acquire those. You acquire those in life. If you don't, you'll die alone. If you live the life of selfishness, you will get what you paid for. Nothing. And I've seen that in the ministerial life that I've lived and even in friendships where I've seen people who are very selfish. And I saw them die over the course of, you know, I've seen them been part of their lives and I've seen people die with no tears. As one fellow put it very well, there were no tears in that house that day. When that, when that woman, it was a woman who died, there were no tears. What a horrible condemnation. What it meant was not his words, the fact that nobody cared. Nobody cared. I cannot imagine being so selfishly yourself that once you're gone, no one remembers you or it puts the effort to rec recollection. Something. That's the final condemnation. My view, I don't know if there's a hell or not, but that's hellish to me, is to be of no accord. No accord. Nobody cares. Rather than Rather than when one dies, when the grief and the sense of loss is so it, it, so complete on the part of those who have survived that they're never the same since because you are you are gone. That's the final heaven to me. In the sense, I'm using it analogically, that you are so loved. And why were you so loved? Because you were worthy of that love. Because you loved them. They were the recipients of your heart's desire, your love, because you love them virtuously. And they grieve for you virtuously. But if you were selfish, you will and did die alone and you will be forgotten. Maybe if you're lucky, you'll be forgotten. I can't think anything worse, actually, than to be completely forgotten because you didn't matter. And why didn't you matter? Because we didn't matter to you. If you didn't have virtue, that's vice. That's vice. <laughs>